When disasters occur, the majority of news coverage often teeters on the edge of disaster porn at best, emphasizing the sheer mass of destruction in the affected area while celebrating a few token heroes. At its worst, the media perpetuates harmful stereotypes, casting survivors as looters and justifying extrajudicial murder of people of color by the police and mostly white vigilantes, just like what was well documented during Hurricane Katrina. But in both scenarios, news reporting routinely underplays how local communities come together to recover from the immediate devastation and rebuild the community, often on a new foundation of sustainability and justice. And it's a good thing that people collaborate instead of competing during a crisis, because all signs point towards an increase in climate change fueled disasters in the coming years. This kind of response is worth celebrating. And at the same time, there's no better way to respond to disasters than to anticipate them happening and become better prepared before they strike. While little preparation today can save a lot of trouble tomorrow, it can also create immediate benefits, like stronger community ties, increased civic capacity, and the joy that comes from accomplishing things together. You just heard the foreword to our new book, The Response, Building Collective Resilience in the Wake of Disasters. We hope the interviews, case studies, how-to guides, and personal stories will deepen your understanding of community-led disaster response and foster increased engagement with your neighbors, family, and friends to build collective resilience as you prepare for the future together. Find out more information and download a free ebook at theresponsepodcast.org.